Okay, buddy, let's get into a full briefing on the Scalper LPR. LPR is linear price runs, final version. Got all the mechanics and the visualization done. All we're wrapping up today is the ability that every time these conditions are met, that there is the ability to have a signal alert, meaning that, that those events on bar one are a, a standalone um, output, I guess maybe is the right term. So here it is. This is what it's going to look like, and I'm going to show you the various variations. Uh, all the criteria that determines what is a pinched area or squeezed area on the indicator, we call that the thrust. That would be a thrust up. That would be a thrust down. That's See how the indicator that had some gap collapses in on itself. So when the gap between the two indicators is at a certain amount of, of width or vertical price distance or less as a numerical value, the conditions are met. The indicator squeezes together and we're plotting this color that's saying, hey, you're in that environment and we had it here. So theoretically, on this bar close, everything was met. We have yellow for up, orange for down. So on this bar close and the beginning of the following bar, a person could get into a trade, put a stop two bars back, and you're sitting in the trade and then eventually starts really running hard. And you know how you trail stop and all that. I'm not worried about that. Let's just get into the mechanics of the indicator, what you're get, what you're get, about to get, and how it all works and all that good stuff. And I'll go through one additional like case study of working these trades, and show you uh, why this is going to be a really important tool. Uh, and I've never seen anything like this. Maybe you guys have out in the trading realm for FX, futures, or crypto quick scalping, or heck, even people trading stocks. So we're comparing the gap between a very good indicator that's pretty responsive to price. In the indicator, we have the ability to change the responsiveness of the indicator of both legs of it, or both plots of it, both uh, on two separate axes per indicator. So there's lots of ability for moderate to experienced level traders to really dial stuff in on particular instruments. You know, let's say somebody's tracking, uh, you know, kitty cat coin that Elon just put out, and it's got a market cap of 2059th from the top market cap crypto. I'm not going to go be building chart templates on that. You can go figure it out on your own. So everything's adjustable. So let's show you how I built, what it is, and how it works. So right now, and I'll, and I'll give you a chart template, so at least you have a starting point. So right now, we have some settings on the inputs page. We have all the ability to adjust the first two areas or for the up moves. The next two areas, length three, so length one and two. Inputs are for upside action, link three and four are for downside price action. I would leave these alone in the beginning and just, you know, go with the templates I send you. Where you can adjust things is uh, colors and gaps and all that. On the NASDAQ, on a five bar Renko, five Renko setting right here, uh, I have a squeeze zone of eight. That means any time the distance between prices 80 cents in price or less, color me some yellow for up and some orange for down. The thrust zone is, that's where the condition, this is where the uh, meat and potatoes of the indicator is. When I have a 60 cent gap or less, color these areas yellow for up and orange for down. And this is the one that will have the alert set to it, the thrust zone. The thickness, I can make this shading that's adjacent to the main indicator, and I decided not to have it the indicator itself, but we decided to displace it to the opposite side of the candles. I can make it less thickness or greater. 
and I'll cover this in an install video. Uh, so that's all there. Then in the style, you can color and set how thick and opacity for your up line segments. One and two are for up, three and four are for down. Uh, these you want to absolutely leave alone. These help us color in these shaded areas. They should always be on black and they should always be zero and one, always. Otherwise, your chart's going to look like a mess. Really, I think we might just take this out. Oh, that's right. We can't hard code it until maybe I can find a programmer that can. So we just built it that way as is. Now, let's say you also want your bars to be colored and you want to see the shading. Or maybe you want the bars to be colored and you don't want to see the shading. Hey, no problem. Bar color, yellow for up and orange for down. So we give you two visualizations. You can have the bar colored with the thick thrust zone, or I can go into the thrust zone setting. Remember we had that over here, thrust zone. If I don't want to see those, I could just maybe say, hey, go zero. And let's go zero. The key is I want you to have, and you can still see paint bars. Let's say you don't want to see the barbed wire that I call it, or this, or the lines. I always want to see them. Maybe you don't. Hey, no problem. We're giving you flexibility to do this how you want. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to color these back up. I'm just going to show you different variations. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to say, I don't want to see the paint bars, the bar coloring. I'll turn that off. And I really don't want to see my squiggly lines in the barbed wire anymore. Okay, no problem. There you go. Price as is. And you can use this with the Z box, without the Z box. Uh, you could have, you know, you could uh, turn off the Z box so you just see the bands and you don't get the coloring outside. So all your candlesticks would be always gray, but you'd see these uh, linear price runs. In the end, you can set it however you want. So let's just do a little case study. If we just randomly, I'll grab any area. We took every trade. And this is about 80% dialed in. It's not totally dialed in yet as far as settings go for this instrument, for this chart. So on this bar, we get the signals. We get in, stop two bars back, two bars of price movement, break even plus, stopped out. This trade we get in, it went at least two bars or more, stopped to break even, got stopped out. This one went to, stopped out, stopped out. This one we got in, and and then maybe you caught a little extra, make make a little, or maybe make a bar or two before you got, if you had your stop trailing and tight, you might have got stopped out making about two bars of profit. Here you get in, stopped out, break even plus. Here you get in, made some money. Here you get in, made some money. Here you got in, you probably would have lost a bar. Here you get in, catch a nice run, made some money. Here you get in, made some money. Here you get in, stopped out right away, probably lost a bar. Here you got in, lost a bar. Here you got in, made some money. Here you got in at the first one, wrote it, made some money. Here you got in. So in other words, can you see you could probably start using this very effectively. And now I'm going to go build, now that I have the indicator done, I'm going to go build very technical, detailed, with some live trading examples of how to go in and work these trades. This, I think, is going to become the premier hyper or quick scalping tool in the industry. Just following very clunky, simple, basic in-trade management. And uh, so anyhow, now I got it built. Now we're going to attach the alerts. So at some point tomorrow, hopefully by end of day tomorrow, about the time all the markets are opening, I'll try to get this in your hands with the ability to see the alerts, but this is uh, this is good. It really turned out well. I like seeing the squiggly lines and the barbed wire areas, but you can see, you don't, you don't have to. You can just let the audible tone. And how would the audible tone work? You'll have an audible tone for down and an audible tone for up with the alerts. So you get an up one and you'll hear one type of audible tone. And only on the first bar. We don't want to keep hearing it bar after bar. Then then it's not actionable. Plus, you can you can fatten up your thrust zone requirement 
So a lot of these little Nixie type trades that are in horrible trade location, you won't hear anything, but maybe you'll lose two or three bars on the entry here, but you're absolutely still going to catch all the big moves. So having that adjustability is key because I had to build this indicator so a guy can go off and trade, you know, Ethereum with it on a time-based chart. Preferably, he's using the Renko. I always recommend Renko. They get rid of a lot of the noise. And Renko's help you see linear price runs uh, better from a visual efficiency standpoint. So you can use time-based charts. I just recommend, if you're not, not used to Renko's, give them a, ch give them a chance. But a guy might be trading NASDAQ, a guy might be trading oil, uh, somebody might be trading the CFDs on oil or the NASDAQ, or another guy's trading the futures instrument and so on. So I had to make the uh, indicator have all kinds of adjustability to dial it into the instrument and time frame. And I also had to make it because I know there's people that are colorblind or people don't want to have color biases. They want colors that are more neutral, that don't make them have a bias. So you get to, look at that, all the colors are all adjustable. You can make them whatever you want. You can make them Tutsi, Fruitsi, Fuchsia to the upside and, uh, you know, Magenta to the downside. Whatever, whatever the heck you want to do, it's in there. I always turn off uh, labels and price scale. I don't like to see a bunch of labels. You can leave them on. Uh, background, plots, background coloring is the shading for the non-thrust areas. Uh, inputs you can play with the indicators to make it more response you know you could you could look at going four two four one uh, for the ups and four two you know in, in the end you got lots of adjustability you got the squeeze zone coloring you know when the when the mark when the indicator is kind of getting close to a thrust zone but not yet there you can expand that or diminish it you always want your squeeze zone to never be lower than your thrust zone number. And then you can thicken up how thick and how bright, you know, you get to pick the color. You want your coloring that's adjacent to the candlestick. I mean, you might want to make it so thick that it comes in as barely, you know, it's like touching your candlestick almost. So it's almost like the, the candles are writing on it, you know. In the end, you get to get to set it however you want so lots of adjustability and remember it this doesn't the, the funny thing is this doesn't just work good for scalping you can actually go in higher time frame charts and see linear uh, price moves developing uh, and and I'll show you real quick my kind of last thing and then I'll finally shut up here I'll show you about the only times I ever look for these setups myself you can do it your want this is what I do. I like what's called level sweeps. So let's 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 do a textbook level sweeps. Okay, I had a prominent pivot. Oops, I'm still getting used to trading views uh, tools drawing, so I'm a little bit slower than others, so just bear with me there. Let me get rid of that. Okay. Let's say I know this is a key level. The market sweeped it out. It's gone. That level means nothing to me anymore. And the failure of that, the market will frequently accelerate back into the prior range after it sweeps the level. I look for linear price runs out of that activity. Number one, that's my number one area. I look for these. The other ones is M's and W's. I always look especially if it's in conjunction with the market retesting a low or retesting a high and failing or a market that gets into a hard trend and it's starting to stair step higher so i'm getting sequential higher pivot lows you know sequential higher pivot lows and uptrends or sequential lower pivot highs and downtrends but i absolutely love to look for linear price runs out of w pattern buys and M pattern sells. And any of you, any of you, you know, know that I built a new algo system. I've been building systems and advanced trading tools for 15 years or 16 years now, trading for 18, building tools uh, for uh, right there. So I see the W pattern. W pattern. I'm getting lift, and oh, it's going linear. I'm in. I look for those all the time.